All right, guys. So this is my uh, my third take on this video. The first one I got about halfway through and it didn't record. And then I was doing a heck of a job on the second take. You know, I mean, I was I was really breaking it down. And the dang fire alarm goes off. And you know, when you're in these these damn schools and the fire alarm goes off, it's it's freaking loud. So I I said some four letter words uh, I shouldn't have said. And uh, so I ruined the whole take. It's better than last time it happened, though. Last time I was in the bathroom, it scared me so bad. I might have peed all over the wall. But uh, anyway, I guess that's life. So we're going to do this the third time. And if it don't work out this time, y'all going to have to pay and go to a glacier clinic like everybody else. All right. So um, you guys wanted some passing game breakdown stuff. And basically every question I got was, was on passing stuff. And I was actually a little bit surprised you guys didn't want some, some Notre Dame information with that big game coming up that's perfectly fine the passing game is my bread and butter i think y'all know i'm an air raid guy um, so i mean i can i can talk passing game all freaking day all right but uh for any of this to make any sense you know we got to talk about what quarterbacks and and coordinators are looking for when you call the pass game because it's a little more complicated i think than the run game in the sense that there's more concepts. Okay, you could take away an entire route route combination with certain coverage. So you got to have answers. Got to have more answers. You know, with the run, we could have four or five concepts, dress them up a little bit. With the pass game, you know, there's all kind of stuff. Okay, you know, we've we've already talked about RPOs. You know, Clemson does a lot with that, and we've talked about our screen game. You know, we, you've got both your RPO screens, you know, your key screens and your bubble screens. We talked about that. But then you've also got your um, your lineman releasing screens, like your middle screens, your slip screens, your delay screens. So, you know, outside of those things, okay, everything else kind of falls under being a quick game concept or a drop back concept. And usually teams will carry a few screens, okay, they'll carry a few RPOs. And then you'll carry, depending on the team, you'll carry a handful of drop back concepts and a handful of quick concepts. So just it's not realistic for me to cover our entire, you know, passing offense in one 45 minute video. I mean, that would take, I mean, heck, I'll do it. I, I love this stuff, but it would take a really long time. So what I decided to do, because, you know, uh, most of us are like goldfish, and we don't have very long uh, attention spans. I don't either. You know, my wife tries to make me watch that, that dang um, – what's that show where the people dress up like mushrooms and broccoli and stuff and sing songs. I, I couldn't care less. I don't have any attention span. So I know you guys probably don't either, so I'm just going to pick two. And we're going to go over the smash concept, which will be a drop-back concept, and the snag concept, which is a, um, which is a quick game concept. All right, so let's start with what, what the quarterback and coordinators are looking for, okay? So first and foremost, where are the safeties, okay? So we define with the safeties that the middle of the field is either open or closed. So what we have here, okay, with two high safeties beyond this space we call the hard decks, they're deep, okay, you know, 10, 11 yards. We call this middle of the field open. And the reason, if you see where I've got my H running this crossing route, Okay, there's a hole in the coverage right here. Okay, now there's only a handful of options that you have coverage wise if you're playing a middle of the field open coverage. Okay, you could have cover two. Okay, in which case your corners are responsible for the flats and each safety has a half of the field. Okay, and they're responsible for anything deep on the deep half. Right, you could have quarters or cover four. Okay, we're now we're dividing the field into quarters. So this corner has a quarter of the field. He's got a quarter of the field. He's got a quarter of the field and he's got a quarter of the field. And our linebackers are essentially responsible for underneath coverage. Okay, so he would have, you know, hook to flat, right? Um, he would have a curl to flat. These guys got your hook curls, you know, so you got that option. The weakness of that is your underneath stuff, right? Or you could play two man. Okay. You don't really see a ton of two man, uh, but there's actually a great example in the national championship game where Alabama plays it some on us. 
Okay. Uh, so two man is we're still going to have deep pass. So these guys are going to play deep zones. He's got half, he's got half, but we're man to man underneath. Okay. The problem with two man and the reason people don't do it a lot is unless your front, your front five are just freaking dudes. You're just not sound in the run game. You can run quarterback draw over and over and over. And so long as you're playing two man, you don't have an answer. Okay. So you don't see that a ton. Okay. But people, people do do it from time to time, particularly against uh, air raid teams that chuck the ball around the yard, you know, or if you just think you've got dudes here and they can't block you, then maybe you do some of that. Okay. The other, the other base out of coverage is, is middle of the field closed. Okay. Or one high. All right. So if they put a safety, one deep safety smack dab in the middle of the field, we would call the middle of the field closed. And if you look at any kind of post or crossing route coming in here, this safety can eat it up. Okay. And there's essentially two base coverages you can play out of this. The most common one is cover three and cover one. Okay. So a cover three is it's a full blown zone coverage. Okay. We're dividing the field into thirds. So this corner is responsible for anything deep from the hash to the sideline. The free safety is responsible from the hash to the hash. And the corner is responsible from hash to the sideline. So they're, they've got the deep game. Okay. Underneath, your strong safety has your curl to flat. Your backer here has from curl to flat, whatever you want to call him. I got a 3 4 drawn up. And these guys have hooks. All right. The weaknesses are your hash is deep. Okay, that's going to be tough, particularly if you make this guy pick which hash he wants to cover. Okay. And you can also, you also have the, the flats and shallow underneath open here. Okay. Now, the other main coverage you can play is cover one, and this is your more, probably your most common man coverage. Okay. Is where you're going to put a, you're going to leave your free safety deep. And he's basically just playing center field, okay? And everybody else is man-to-man -man underneath, all right? Now, the last coverage you can see is called cover zero, which is where we bring this guy down, all right? So these guys might play off, but this is like literally they're sitting in the house and they're praying that they get there because if they don't, it's probably a touchdown, okay? Some people used to refer to that, refer to that as old jailbreak blitz, all right? So – there are all kinds of variations, right? And good defensive coordinators are going to try to disguise what they're doing. So they might show you two high and roll to um, and roll to a one high look. So, for example, you might get something like this, okay? And all of a sudden, at the snap of the ball, he rolls down to play the play the curl, and he rolls in the middle of the field, right? So you get that to try to trick you. Okay. Sometimes they'll show you cover two and all of a sudden play two man, or they could show you uh, quarters and, and bump down to, to cover two. All of a sudden, so they're always trying to disguise what they do. So if all we look at is the safeties. We don't get the full picture. All right. So the other thing we teach quarterbacks to look at is what I call DEL or D E L, which stands for depth, eyes, and leverage. Okay. So once you got the picture of the safeties, you can look at your corners and your weak side linebacker in particular and, and see what they're doing. So first thing is depth, okay? So if you see the corner is playing deep, okay? Of course, we already know if the safeties are leaving the field open or close. But if the corner is playing deep, that suggests that he has a deep responsibility, okay? So that greatly increases the odds that we're going to get cover three or quarters. Okay. If he's playing shallow, that suggests that he has an underneath coverage responsibility. So chances are it's either cover two or some kind of man coverage. All right. Now we got to remember that not all corners are made equal. You know, if you go out here and you see a, you see a white kid at corner, I mean, me, if I see a white kid at corner, I'm calling cracker. We're, we're going to throw it to the white kid because they usually can't run. You know, it's just what it is, right? I don't know why that is, but, you know, if you got a dude over here who can really fly, he can play a little bit shallower and get back there. So you just got to know that stuff from film study. All right. Now, the other thing we can look at is his leverage. Okay. 
So what's he trying to take away? Is he playing outside? If he's playing outside of out of my Z here, that suggests that he does not want to give up an outside release. Okay, because if the Z can get outside, okay, and we got cover two on or something like that, then that makes the, the run for your safety longer to cover that. Okay, and that means the offense can create more space. So if you see him playing outside and he's low, that's a great suggestion that maybe it's cover two. Okay, what if he's playing inside or head up? Okay, well, if he's inside, that might suggest man coverage. You know, the one route that really just destroys man coverage are your uh, your picks and your slants. And if you play inside leverage here, that makes those picks and slants just a little bit harder to run. Okay, so maybe that's something that, that you need to know. And lastly, you can look at his eyes. Okay. If he is in some kind of zone coverage, his eyes are either going to be locked in on the quarterback, because remember, he's dropping to his zone and reading the quarterback's eyes, okay? Or he may be moving his eyes back and forth between the receiver and quarterback. If you see either of those things, you can probably guess his zone, okay? Now, if you see him down here and his eyes are locked in on the receiver, and he's, he's not taking his eyes off, okay? He's in man, all right? So the other thing we can look at is leverage of, of this linebacker. If he's, you know, if he's kind of out here, okay, then I might suggest zone, right? Because he's got to get to this spot to here. If he's in here, okay, and he's coming, that means that strong safety might be a man and he might be blitzing here, all right? So those are all keys that you can look at. It's also important to remember – Man coverage is not sound. The only reason people play man is to send pressure, okay? They're taking a gamble to get after the quarterback, to, to send five or six, possibly even seven guys, okay? And, you know, the defensive backs have a huge disadvantage there simply because the receiver knows what he's doing and the defensive backs just guessing, okay? Um Really good teams like Clemson and Bama will play more man simply because they've got better athletes, all right? The two uh, concepts I'm going to cover today, though, are mostly zone beaters, okay? Now, there are two ways – there are two philosophies behind the pass game, okay? Some guys like me almost exclusively prefer full field progressions, meaning – you know, every receiver, I, I just call a play and every receiver knows what to do and the quarterback's going to read the entire field, okay? Clemson does this from time to time, okay? But mostly Clemson is a half-field progression team, which means they double call their, their pass game stuff, all right? So what I mean by that is they're going to call – they're usually going to call one concept to one side of the field and – another to the other. And the quarterback's going to look at all the information that he has available, and he's going to make the best decision that he can in order to, uh, in order to uh, get the ball to the open guy. Okay? So, you know, on one side of the field, they might call a middle of the field open beater. On the other side of the middle of the field closed beater, they might call two plays that they think work together, you know, to where maybe they can get a three-person read. You know, it, it just kind of is what it is, okay? So let's start with smash, which is a drop-back concept. I'll show you some, some cut-ups and draw it up and, and kind of talk through the play and show you some of the answers of it, and then we'll get into snack, okay? So smash is really good. I really like it against two high covers. I think it's great against quarters or cover two, okay? And you can oftentimes hit it on cover three, but, you know, I, there are other things I'd rather call there. Okay, so essentially what we're doing with our slot is we're running a corner route. Okay, now he has the option of breaking this off into a deep out based on, on leverage and space. Okay, so if this safety, okay, stays high, okay, maybe that's an indicator we should break it off. But if he kind of stays flat footed, we're going to stick on our corner. Or maybe I see the corner get really deep. Okay, and I don't want to run right to him, so now I can cut this off into a deep out. Okay, and in essence, what this is designed to do is we're putting the corner in a high-low conflict. 
Okay. Because we're just running a little hitch or, or something to that effect, something to attack the flats underneath. The corner can either sit down here and take this away, but if he does that, he's vacating grass over the top of him for either the corner or the out, or he can bail. But if he does that, we have a very high percentage throw here on the, on the hitch or whatever underneath route we've got here. Okay. So that's the essence of smash. Okay. It's just a high, low read. Now, backside, we can call whatever. My favorite way to do it, and I, I only call it like this. And in fact, I'm probably going to wind up getting rid of smash. I like other things better, but it's a staple for Clemson. But I like to tag the crossing route with it. Okay. I like to get somebody threatening this grass here. And, you know, if they send some kind of blitz, he can just simply sit down right here. We've got a great hot route. And, but that also puts a kind of horizontal stretch on the safety. Okay. Because if he can get leverage on the strong safety, now the freeze got to choose if he's going to kind of leverage over here, which can make your hole bigger for the, um, for the corner. Or if he rides the corner, you should have a big hole here. All right. So I got a clip of that. I'm going to show you real quick from the 2016 national championship game. All right. Let me find this guy here. Okay. In this case, they actually do it out of trips, but it's the same thing. 1445. So Leggett's going to run the crossing route, and they're just going to – it's going to clear right open, and he's going to avoid um, getting rerouted and sit in the hole. And it's just money. All right, here he goes. There's Leggett. Okay, and there he is in the grass. Bam. Easy. I'll roll that back one time. Let me see if I can get it paused right before the snap. All right, so Clemson's in trips here. So Leggett's – he's actually going to run more of a double move here, but it's the same concept. He's going to kind of stick it and then get in the middle of the field where the hole is. Uh, Renfro is going to convert his route to a deep out, and then we got the hitch there. And so we'll clear out the safety here. Okay. See, Alabama's trying to trick Clemson a little bit. But he's sitting on the hash, and he looks like he's going to stay low, but then he bails to like a cover two quarters kind of thing. Okay, They're in cover two, I think. Looks like it. But it just it winds up just vacating this grass right here. All right. Another variation of it is, is you can run switch. Okay, and I actually like switch better than I like basic smash. It's a good way, you know, if you're getting some man coverage or if you're getting some um, uh, some middle of the field close coverages and you're just not sure, it's a way you can set up a little pick and, you know, force these guys to play with their eyes a little more. So when we call switch, all we're doing is we're telling the Y and the Z they got to switch their routes. Okay, so now he's going to run what we call a shake corner which he can still convert into an out. And now he's just going to run a quick out. So notice we got guys in the exact same places, okay? But if they run this correctly and the Y goes right under the Z's butt, okay, now we get a little bit of a natural pick here on this backer if he's trying to, you know, play man and chase the Y out here or whatever his responsibility is. And now also if he's a man and he chases this in here, he might get picked by his own guy, you know, they might get confused and mess up the trade-off. So you get that some as well. So I'm going to show you guys smash with the switch call, which uh, Bama played a lot of a lot of like versions of two-man on us and things like that. So that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good answer to that sort of stuff. Well, this is not the right film. Here it is. It's hard to tell when you got the same teams and they're wearing the same exact jerseys because I've got both the 2016 and 2018 game for our clips today. Here we go. All right, so look here. Clemson's in or Alabama's in some kind of – it's man. It's cover one. So they're playing man across the board with a with the deep safety. So, you know, your regular just running a plain old hitch in the corner isn't nearly as good. But since they got switch on here at the bottom of the screen, we get a little bit of a pick. 
and he falls down, and we're able to bang that in there to Mike Williams. So I'll show it to you one more time. Okay. I remember I said Clemson double calls this stuff. So, you know, we've got one concept called up here to the top, and then we've got the uh, smash switch called down here. Watson's just looking at it and seeing what he likes best, and he picks the, um, the smash switch down here. All right, so that's a that's a really good way to uh, create a little bit of a rub or pick on there for teams that want to play man. Pretty simple solution there. All right, now one of my favorite ones is from the 2018 game. We had Smash called in, and we caught Bama thinking they were smart. It was really a really really stupid defensive play call. And they don't make too many stupid defensive play calls. Sometimes you get lucky, All right? But we called them napping. And we had regular old smash called with verticals tagged on the backside. It's like third and 16 or something. It's early in the game. And we had a touchdown because we catch them rolling in the cover three. All right. And I can't remember which side. So I'm just going to draw it up. And if, if I got it backwards, it's fine. Okay. So what we wind up doing is we tag four verticals. Okay. With smash. All right. And Bama, thinking they're going to outsmart us, they show this look, but they wind up rolling to cover three. Okay. So he buzzes down and he buzzes to the middle. Okay. But the problem with that, when he buzzes down and he gets a vertical, holy crap, there's no way for this guy to get over. This corner is, uh, is running his third, but he don't have leverage to get there. And we wind up not only moving the sticks on third and 16, but we get a huge play. So that's from the 2018 game. I'll show you that really quick. So this is smash with four verticals tagged into it. All right, 10.53. I think this is a huge play in this game, huge. So smash is down here on the bottom of the screen and the verticals is going to be on the top. Oh, I messed that up a little bit. That's all right. Here we go. Watch the top of the screen here. It just clears out. They don't have leverage easy. I was a terrible defensive play call on third and 16. And, you know, I think, I think honestly, you know, we would have been good throwing out the smash or the hitch to smash and, and punting there, but they do something dumb and, and give Lawrence credit as a freshman. He sees them roll. Okay. I want to show, show him roll one more time. See if they were going to fool him. He rolls down, he rotates the middle of the field and he just, there's no way. Okay. No way. Like I said, that's a pretty advanced thing for freshmen to see there. All right. Now, there's other options, you know, because Bama got in this particular 2018 game where they started playing some two-man, okay, meaning they just think they're better than us in the box. And you know what? They, they probably were. All right, so – they figured they didn't they didn't need a lot of help from their secondary to stop the run. And we did not run the ball that well. So they said, okay, we're gonna play two man and you know, we're gonna be able to stop the run that way. Now, one thing about Alabama is they were terrified of leaving their corners on islands with guys like Higgins and Justin Ross. And they were very justified to do so. So they didn't really want to, if they could help it, particularly after the early parts of the game where they got beat deep a couple times, they didn't want to get into a middle of the field closed or one high look. They wanted to stay middle of the field open as much as they could. So that meant smash is good, but we got to find a way to, to help it beat man coverage. Okay, so what we did was we converted this outside route, this hitch, into a route that's much better against man. Okay, and we sort of run in pigtails okay it's a little in and out guys in the same spot very difficult to cover in man so i'll show you that um let's see 
So you still get the same advantage of attack and cover two, but now you got something that can handle the um, the man coverage underneath. I'm on the wrong minute. Here we go. Bama's actually in cover one here. So they're in a, oh, they see so now they rolled into cover two. Okay. So again, this is another way to disguise. So he's sitting in the middle. So if you're reading this pre snap, you think, okay, cover one or cover three. We own the snap. He rock and rolls out here and he bails. All right. But if you pay attention to your corners and whatnot, okay, and your outside backers, Actually, get two man here, but you see the pigtail at the bottom. But the pigtail action and the little the little move there by Ross converts that pretty good play, 10, 15 yards. All right. The last one I want to show you is actually one where we get a bad ball, and you know, Lawrence has a little bit of a, a freshman issue here and timings to solve. But I also wanted to show you it's important because receivers have to win leverage sometimes. And on this one, Hunter does a pretty good job of winning leverage. We just happen to not realize what was going on with pass pro. And that's totally on Lawrence. Should be the very next play There's a penalty. Here we go. All right, so what's interesting about this is Clemson is running smash to the top of the screen, and they're going to run the next concept that I'm going to call, which is a quick game concept, snag down here. So Lawrence is simply going to read the defense to decide what he likes. Okay. So now if we look at this, okay, we're seeing two man. Okay. Depth eyes leverage here. Depth eyes leverage here. Right. We're seeing this here, but with what we're seeing underneath, they can't really roll out of this and still be sound, right? Unless they move somebody. But when you, when you know you got man coverage, you know pressure's coming, okay? And if we got snagged, that means our back is gonna be in the pass concept. So we can't keep him in in protection, right? So Bama's got one, two, three, four, five with the potential of six that can come. See, Alabama is playing a little bit of a game here, okay? If you look at this guy, his eyes are on the quarterback. And look at this safety widening out here a little bit. That suggests this guy is coming in possibly to blitz, and he's going to be man on with Renfro. Okay, see him? They can't hide it. If you see it, oh, there it is. All right. And he's rolling to the middle, so it actually they're, they're rolling it into cover one. I told you all wrong. All right, but when you see that, okay, well, should have gotten all sides there. But the problem is your Lawrence, particularly if ETN is getting out of here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six guys blitzing, and you only got five guys protecting. Okay, that means there's going to be a free rusher. And if you get hit in the face, that's your fault, not offensive line's fault. Nobody can block and block two guys. So Lawrence has to know immediately that he's got to throw this thing hot, okay? And he should have a hot route that he could he could bang in here right now. He choose he doesn't see it though, okay? And he winds up throwing off of his back foot, kind of an errant throw. But now what I really like here is Renfro's route, and this is why this little white dude here who uh, who looks like a forty year old man, you know, with receding hair, is playing in the league and, and making good dollars for the Raiders because he is a brilliant route runner. All right, so watch him. He realizes that he's got man coverage here. Because when he sees this, he knows. Okay, when he sees this guy coming here, he knows. So he's going to get in here. He's going to stem him and threaten him inside, and then he's going to break out on the post. So if Lawrence get has time here or changes the protection or something and get that ball thrown, we should be in really good shape. So that's I think that's on Lawrence. He should have either thrown hot down here or changed the protection.
right, and kept ETN in. Those were his options. Okay, maybe he thought he was a dude because uh, he is a dude, but maybe he thought he could, you know, buy some time with his feet and make an accurate throw. That didn't turn out to be the case. All right, so that's smash. Now, the other concept is a quick game concept, and it's called snag. All right. Now, you can run snag out of doubles and trips. It's really the same, and you could double call this the same as you could um, smash. Essentially, what we're doing is we're running a sit route here, a corner here, and the back is flaring. Okay, so a quarterback is going to take like a one one step power step, and he's going to throw right now. So if we get cover two, okay, we got a good chance of hitting the whole shot here with Y. Okay, anything else, we're picking on this guy here. Okay, so first thing we're teaching Z to run right at this guy's right behind this guy. Okay, and you're going to go right where he is, and we're going to put him in a bind. Assuming it's not cover two and the corner is bailing out of here, he can either sit here or he can chase the back. Okay, if he chases the back, bam, catch, throw, stick it in there right now. Okay, If he sits here, we should be able to throw it to the back. Now, we can also do some things with the Z here, okay, such as you know we can work him back out. Okay. Or we can double move him to where he's from here to here, and oftentimes there'll be a nice hold there or right here. And we can also wheel the back, maybe. We can change the Y to a post, which we do actually a lot in Alabama game. If we like leverage better as a post, we can certainly do that. Okay, so I'll show you some, uh, some clips of Snag. Okay, and Snag's really good against zone coverage, not so much on man. Okay, so if we line up and we got Snag called, a lot of times we'll have something we like on man versus man coverage to the backside. This first clip I'm going to show you, that's exactly what happens too, back from the 2016 game. Okay, so this is early in the game. I got to move my thing so I can say, all right, so Bama's in cover one, man to man, very clearly. So Watson sees it. Watson, Watson's a vet. Okay. He sees, okay, we got our kind of our stick here with the um with the tight end or snag, whatever. It's oh, I'm sorry, a corner here with the tight end, snag here. He just doesn't like it. So he says, you know what? If they're gonna play man, they're gonna struggle with slant. So we got double slant on here, which will clear this out. And now it's just we got a matchup advantage here with a six foot five, 230 pound Mike Williams on this corner here. And there's just not much that cat can do. He's just not big enough or physical enough to, to beat Mike off that ball. And so, again, you got man coverage. You know, pressure's coming. And Bama's sending five. And get the ball out quick. That's the solution. All right. Next two clips I'm going to show you are snag with the post call on from the 2018 National Championship game. And we actually uh, – had one that should have been a touchdown, but again, we had a protect, not a protection issue is on the quarterback. You know, a lot of times we get on the quarterback for sacks or get on the offensive line for sacks, and it's the damn quarterback's fault. All right, so this first one here, really early in the game, we called snag with a post on it. Good afternoon, T-Hawks. Oh, man. Nobody cares about this. Let's, we're going to rock and roll. I'm going to try to talk through this. I'm not doing a third take. Hope y'all know what bus to get on. There it is. See how open – he just misses ETM, but ETN's open here. There's a corner. Man. Should have been pretty easy. You know, early in the game, I think uh, I think Lawrence had a little bit of the freshman national championship game jitters. He got it pretty quick, though, and played really well when it was all said and done. All right, here's another example. And this one should have been a touchdown. And this is, again, a case of fresh, the true freshman Trevor Lawrence just – 
not really understanding what's going on here with the protection. All right, so on first glance, this looks like cover two, okay? But safety tips off the blitz a little bit, so watch what happens. I might have my clips messed up here. I do. Hang on. That's because I'm a minute ahead of where I'm supposed to be. All right, so here we go. So Alabama is trying to trying to show some kind of cover two or two man look, and they're actually going to roll to cover one. So you know when they're going to play games, so they're going to send this guy here. But if they're going to send him, that means that he's now got to be man on here, and he's got to roll the middle field, right? So when you see this guy start to creep in and this guy creeping out, that should tell you that they're playing some games here and they're trying to lie about what the coverage is. So Lawrence catches onto this, and he decides to go backside, okay, to a slant that he's got. But we got snag cold on the bottom, so it's another example of us double calling. Okay. They totally tip it off. Okay. Maybe he can throw hot to the back here, All right, because they're going to send – looks like – now they're sitting in five, but there's nothing wrong with going that glance there. That's that's good in the pressure, too. We just got to catch the ball. All right. Now, this last clip I'm going to show you guys, let's see, 57.50, is a case is a case of uh, Trevor not throwing hot when he should. All right. It's going to take you off when you see how wide open this is, but we'll have our corner. We'll have our uh, our sit route and then ETN on the flare, who should be your hot man. Okay, but Bama's going to send one, two, three, four, five, six, and if ETN's in the pattern, he can't be your six protector. So we got to know automatically this ball should be thrown hot. Just look here. Look at the grass. If Lawrence sticks his foot in the ground and gets this out on time, knowing that they're sending six and knowing that we can't pick up that guy and gets it out there, it's a touchdown. Maybe the safety could make the tackle, but I seriously doubt he's tackling ETN in space. You just saw it too late, and that's, that's just being a freshman. All right, so he's gotten better and gotten older and more experienced. You know, a lot of times the last thing quarterbacks pick up is, is changing protections and – and knowing when to throw hot simply because that's really advanced stuff. And a lot of guys don't get to do that in high school. You know, that guy was at the prom not too long before this game. So, you know, anyway, that's that's a good example there. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's a breakdown of our smash concept, and our which is our drop back concept we like a lot, and snag, which is a quick game concept that we call – quite often. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a message or post it on the board. Like I said, I'm only scratching the surface of uh, Clemson's drop back game. Um, so have a good one and I enjoy. I made it through the third one. That's pretty good.